Welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hariharna and in this video we will be discussing how the building blocks and components of IoT will make up to a typical IoT reference architecture. We will also be looking into real world example of how this IoT architecture is being used in smart city initiative today. By the end of this video you will have a solid understanding of what IoT architecture is and how it can be applied to solve complex problems in the IoT space. Before we get started, please provide your support by subscribing to this channel. Let's get into the presentation now. In the agenda, we will be discussing about uh, the architecture of IoT. Inside the architecture of IoT, we have two layers of architectures. One is four layer architecture and one more is seven layer architecture. At the end, we'll have a real world use case scenario. In the previous video, we have discussed about basic building blocks as well as components that makes this IoT architecture. So if you haven't watched that video, please click on the top right corner so that you will be able to get more idea about what we are talking in this video. So I'll have a review of basic IoT solution components. So in this diagram, we can look into uh, the network of smart things on the left. So in which we can see both sensors and actuators are available. So these are the real things that we call in IoT. So these sensors and actuators will receive or send data through the gateways. So in the gateways, we have two types. One is field gateway and cloud gateway. So these are optional. Uh, so field gateway can be used in certain scenario and gate cloud gateway can be used in a certain scenario. The field gateways will refer to the IoT edge systems. So in the edge computing, uh, edge processing, all can be done in the field gateways. And the cloud gateways will be working as a protocol translator or the identity translator. So whenever the sensors and actuators doesn't have their own identity, then the cloud gateway can be used to provide the instance of those identity to the cloud. Coming to the data lake. So in the data lake, we can see the data which is unstructured and wide variety of data. So the, here the variety of occurrence represents the unstructured data and all will be dumped in the data lake. Later on, we use this big data warehouse where everything will be categorized. So now let's look into the four layer architecture. So in the four layer architecture, there are basically four layers we call here as a stages. So in the first stage, uh, we, we can have the sensors or actuators, which are real physical things and they can be wired or wireless. So there are certain sensors which will be only connected with the wires and there are uh, some smart sensors which are wireless as well with Bluetooth, LoRa, etc. And in the stage two, uh, whatever the sensors and actuators data is coming, so that will be taken with the hubs and gateway. So these will aggregate the data, gather the data from the sensors or actuators and do the analog to digital transformation and uh, do some basic calculations and send it to the stage three. So in the stage two, the examples that we can look into are in the previous video, I explained about Raspberry Pi and RD. So this can be considered as stage two gateways. So in the stage three, we have edge IT. So this is optional. In certain scenarios, we have to do some pre-processing or analysis before sending the data to the cloud because we'll be having volume uh, of data. So that data should not be bombarded to the cloud or data center because the vast volume will uh, increase the cost as well as the bandwidth, uh, utilize the bandwidth much more. So that's why Edge IT will take care of pre-processing and filtering the data and do certain analysis, which can be done in the cloud. Uh, so Edge IT will have a cloud extensibility. So what are the features we have in the cloud? A uh, few of them can be available in Edge IT. So once that data is filtered, We'll be sending the data to the data center. It can be either physical data center or it can be a cloud. So where we have uh, storage capabilities, 
uh, and then we can have analytics capability as well as uh, we can show the dashboards in the UI with the help of cloud. So this is the reference architecture with four states. Now we have seven layer architecture. So this is seven layer architecture, which is defined by IoT World Forum. So it has given us the reference model where it has seven levels. So in the seven levels, let's start from one. So physical devices and controllers. The physical devices and controllers, as I mentioned previously, are the physical things in IoT are sensors, uh, actuators, and many more machines that we call. So all of them are physical devices which will take up the first level. And the second level will come to this connectivity. The networking part where switches, routers, all those things will come into connectivity. We have this processing units and communication mentioned here. And next one, third one is about the edge computing. So as we have already discussed about edge computing, where we can do some pre-processing as well as pre-analysis before sending it to the cloud so that the data can be filtered as well as uh, basic uh, if you want to uh, immediately work upon any action item uh, then edge computing will come into picture for example there is a fire alarm system and uh, there is there should be less latency so uh, whenever we have we sense that fire has happened and uh, data is reaching to the cloud and then coming back from the cloud to the actuator it may add up the latency so there might be some time delay that is what i am trying to say so uh, for that scenarios, we can have edge computing where edge computing before sending it to the cloud, it can look into the data because it is very closer to the devices and uh, it can immediately act upon the data. So if in this case, it will directly send a command to the physical things that it, the fire alarm system is uh, activated. So you have to start the water sprinkling. So that is the power of edge computing. Next thing is data accumulation. So data accumulation, whatever the data that we are getting, it has to be stored somewhere. So in the previous four years, and uh, we have seen the data lakes, right? So that data lakes and uh, the databases, everything comes under the storage. Next fifth one is about the data abstraction. So whatever the data that we get in different formats, all will be consolidated, aggregated, so that it can be accessible to all the systems above. So that is the job of this data abstraction. Sixth one is about the application. So we have uh, different reporting applications, kind of, uh, analytics control, where we can control the uh, systems of IoT, do the analytics and see the graphs of the reporting, all the applications refers to this uh, layer. So next one is the collaboration and processes. The, in this layer, uh, the humans uh, will be coming to the picture where we will be, uh, using this layer to control all the six layers below and take the value of IoT to the next level. So now let's look into the real world example, how this architecture is being used. So if we take the smart traffic control, so this is the part of uh, any smart city project. So under that we have smart traffic control. So in this smart traffic control, uh, we have uh, if you look into, we have different cars, uh, we have traffic light system, and uh, based on this, we have to take a use case. So what happens is we have certain sensors which, which can detect whether there is a traffic jam or not. So here we can see detection of traffic jam, and if it is 10 miles per hour, it means there is some traffic jam and this uh, vehicles are going very slow. So based on that, it, the data will be sent to traffic management platform. So that platform will in turn uh, send the data to the control applications. So this control application will do the action by altering the traffic lights. So we got the end-to-end -end scenario where the sensors will detect the traffic jam and the actuators will change the uh, traffic signal so that the traffic jam will be reduced. And here one more application use case can be seen here. So that is about the air quality so we also have this air quality management platform here because we have installed the sensors on top of this uh, traffic light uh, so that we can detect co no and no2 
So uh, once these are detected, it will be sent to the air quality management platform and that will be looked upon by the uh, traffic authorities and the city authorities. So that's it for our video on IoT reference architecture. We hope you have a better understanding of what IoT reference architecture is and how it can be applied to solve complex problems in the IoT space. Remember that IoT reference architecture is a key element in the design and implementation of IoT systems and it's important to keep the different layers, interfaces and components in mind when building your IoT system. Before we close, if this video was informative, please like the video and hit that subscribe button to stay updated on new videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.